Welcome back to Free Media. I'm Robbie Suave. And I'm Amber Duke. President Joe Biden is going after the Supreme Court once again, and he wants to change its structure in order to counter the current conservative majority. MSNBC could not be more excited about the prospect. Let's watch. I think it's really important that the president put this marker down. Um, yes, you're right. The chances of this b- becoming enshrined in our Constitution anytime soon are not great. But it is the right thing to do. And there's no question that Roberts Court is in a crisis. Um, that The people do not trust them. Uh, the ethical lapses have been h- huge and notable. And most Americans realize it's not right that these guys can take all this free stuff where everybody else in government has to be very transparent and can't do those kinds of things. I think term limits have always been popular with most voters, no matter who they are for. So I think this will be popular. I think it's a good thing for the Democrats to run on, and especially the issue of whether or not a president can do anything they want and they cannot be held accountable under the law. I mean, committing crimes as president and getting a free pass, get out of jail card is not acceptable to most Americans. So Biden proposed term limits of 18 years, I believe, for Supreme Court justices, and then doing it in such a way to stagger it so that each new president would appoint a certain number of new Supreme Court justices. Um, Look, I actually agree a little bit with what Claire McCaskill said there, that I do think term limits are, in general, a popular thing among the American people. I'm broadly supportive of them. I think in a vacuum, I would not have any issue necessarily with Supreme Court members having term limits. I did look up what the average length of a Supreme Court uh, tenure is on the court. It's 16 years. So this is like natural, if we're doing nothing on average, they already retire before 18 years. So I don't know what massive impact this would actually have. But the point is that Biden and his allies want to change it now because they just don't like the current composition of the court. If it was democratically run, Republicans would be proposing court reform and Democrats would be opposing it. Like it's just, it's not, it's not going to happen, but it's because it's just like, it's a political issue. And it's, it's either, no, and either side when their people were in charge would want to change the rules of who gets to be on the Supreme Court. Yeah, and I think you would end up seeing a more politically partisan court if these so-called reforms were enacted because you would have uh, a president in one term appointing two justices. He says they would be every two years. And then if a president serves two terms, they're appointing four justices, which is nearly half of the makeup of the court. Um, And you also have, if you have a term limit, you know that these Supreme Court justices are going to be looking for work after they leave the court because they're, Mm. they usually stay on until the end of their careers when they either retire or pass away. Um, If they know that they're going to go back into the private sector after they leave the court, you are going to have uh, judges and justices who are much more subjected to the passions of the electorate and the uh, the views of, of the decisions that they're making on these cases because they're going to feel like they need to reintegrate into society or employment after they leave the court. Um, the pressure that they faced, for example, when they were overturning Roe v. Wade, um, when the Dobbs decision was leaked, that type of political pressure can be much more impactful if these justices know that they are going to have to do something else afterwards. Um, And if you are constantly changing the court, the makeup of the court every four to eight years, uh, you're going to see a lot of precedents overturned constantly because you get a liberal majority and then a conservative majority, and it's just swinging back and forth constantly. I don't think that's what the Founding Fathers envisioned for the Supreme Court in terms of just being a check on the other two branches and making sure that the laws being passed were constitutional. Right. I mean, what they envisioned was the legislature actually right. making laws exactly. and the Supreme Court having this more hands-off role. We don't do that because our legislature is just completely incompetent, stalemated, which is sometimes a good thing because it stops some big government spending things from going through, although they can always agree to spend more money is the way it seems. Um, I also think like there's just no shortcut for the fact that if you want more representation for your faction on the Supreme Court, you just have to win more elections over time. Like whoever wins the presidency and controls the Senate 
over a long enough duration of time will appoint, uh, will appoint more people to the Supreme Court. And that you can change the system, but that's still how it's going to be fundamentally. Like they, there's nothing that says this majority on the Supreme Court is going to be Republican forever. If Democrats consistently win, then they will be able to replace those people. There are, they'll also be able to replace people at the federal judiciary level, where a lot of important decisions are made at the circuit level. So there's just nothing, there's nothing permanent about it. It's a little bit like when they talk about changing the Electoral College or whatever other system, like we lost under this system, so we must be doomed and we must change the system. No, <laughs> you don't have to, you can just try to win under these rules. And if there was a different system other than the Electoral College, Republicans would, want, uh, they would run, excuse me, an entirely different kind of campaign. Right now they don't campaign in California, even though there are mil you know, millions of potential Republican voters there, because it doesn't matter under the current system. If you had a different system, it would just be competitive in a different way. It wouldn't be like a magic solution for your side. I also just don't buy the argument from people like Claire McCaskill that the court is in crisis. The majority of decisions that came down in this past term were actually unanimous decisions. Um, That's or, a great point. Or they were decisions that cut across um, ideological lines where you had uh, Amy Coney Barrett in the, in the minority with several of the liberal justices or several of the liberal justices in the majority with the conservatives. I mean, there, there, there was, this was not a case where they were handing down all of these decisions where it was just five, four, six, six, three rather with the conservatives in the majority just wreaking havoc over democracy. Um, and in fact, one of the decisions that was decided more on ideological lines was one in which they gave more power back to voters and the legislature by taking away the deference to federal rulemakers in the bureaucracy who are supposedly part of the expert class, but in reality are people who were just hired because they you know, happened to work in the government and somebody liked them and promoted them to some rulemaking position. But um, they had uh, what was known as Chevron deference, where they got to uh, interpret vague laws the way that they wanted to, even if the there was a more reasonable interpretation um, of the law, or it just needed to go back to Congress for them to make it less vague and more yeah. specific about what they actually wanted implemented. Um, that's a great thing for democracy, actually, that some unaccountable bureaucrat doesn't get just a wide fiat of federal rulemaking. Um, and yet that is one of the biggest reasons why people like Joe Biden want to reform the court now is because he took away, or they took away rather, some of the uh, power of unelected people who can't be held accountable, who tend to make rules that make government bigger and give more power to the executive and tend to be more liberal. It's a great point. So much of what the Supreme Court does is actually consensus-based, is 9-0 or does cut across ideological lines. You just don't hear as much about those decisions from media coverage because the media wants to play up this, oh, the court is so partisan and is so uh, is so disliked and less popular and respected than ever, even though the, the Supreme Court's approval rate, ratings still much higher than Congress or the executive branch. They're the most popular branch still. I mean, we had the Supreme Court um reject due to lack of standing a challenge against uh, being able to mail out the abortion pill. And this is the supposedly, you know, nakedly partisan, extreme right wing court. It's yeah. obviously laughable when you look at what is actually coming out of their sessions. More free media right after this.